Hi, welcome to Daddy Curb's Garden. I'm sitting out here on this beautiful evening, catching up on some things online and in the garden. For the past couple weeks, I've been uh, a little disconnected from the online world because um, I've been focusing on family. We had some things going on and I felt like we as a family decided that we would put down our devices and we would focus on each other. So we've had very limited uh, screen time but we've had a lot of great family time. So forgive my absence. I wanna show you some of the highlights in the garden, some of the things that are doing well, and some of the things that uh, have suffered my neglect a little bit. Because as I was focusing on family, I kinda neglected the garden too. But let me show you around. Check out my tomatoes. These tomatoes planted in the ground are doing really well. Some of the others in the buckets aren't doing so well, I'll show you that in just a moment. Behind me, you can see the zucchini, some squash, cantaloupe, peppers, and more tomatoes. The tomato bucket garden is doing okay, but because I've been a little neglectful, they haven't gotten the water that they really should have. So there's a lot of brown and yellow leaves. I think mostly just from a uh, deficit of water. When I posted the video about how to plant tomatoes in buckets, there was some wonderful discussion and I learned some things. One of the things that um, was in the comments, I believe it was on Reddit, was that I should have only drilled one hole and I should have drilled it higher on the side of the bucket. This would allow for drainage, but it would have also allowed a deeper reservoir for those roots to get into some water for when I didn't water it on a regular schedule. In order to compensate for my lower and my multiple holes, I took some bolts. I had a bucket of bolts that uh, I didn't have. It was a special tip bolt and I would, there's no way for me to use them. I don't have the tool to use them. So I just took those and I pushed them into the holes. This doesn't stop the drainage, but it allows it to be a lot slower so this will hold water a little longer. Not too long ago, the local permaculture group did a group buy on a, a, a bulk order of sweet potatoes. And I decided to go ahead and participate in that and plant sweet potatoes in my round garden. The garlic that was in here didn't fare too well. Uh, the fence is up because goats and chickens kept getting in here and they kind of messed that up. But the sweet potatoes, as you can see, are doing well. The Kershaw or Kushaw squash that's growing here in front of these tomato plants is going all over the garden. They're growing very well. Next time I won't plant these inside the garden bed because they take up so much space. But it's kind of fun to watch them and the squash is growing beautifully. I harvested one last night and I ate it like a summer squash. If you harvest it early you can use the soft meat and grill it like summer squash or you can save it for later and use it like a winter squash. I'm afraid the Kershaw squash though, even though it's growing well, won't last long. This damage here, that's the result of the vine borer. These vines very soon will be falling apart and very likely I'll just have to harvest these squash and call it a season. This is one of a couple of the hot peppers that stayed from last season. This is the peri peri. And what I'm noticing is that the, the peppers on the second year are not only more prolific, but they're a lot larger. The first season they were smaller and not quite as numerous. This hot pepper plant also is producing lots of peppers. And uh, now I have some beautiful red hot peppers. I think these are the Italians. Uh, again, I've forgotten the name of these peppers, but this plant survived the winter and this is its second season. Remember those carrots that I wanted to see if I can get seeds from? Well, I don't know if I'm going to be successful collecting seeds, but they are definitely flowering and going to seed. I possibly could have carrots all over the garden in places I didn't intend them to be. Look how big some of these flower heads are. This cantaloupe bed, this is the one where I had put the uh, the tomato cages and I planted a bunch of seeds and I was just going to let them grow over the tomato cages. Well, it's working. They're growing all over the tomato cages 
And let's take a look inside because there's actually some fruit growing. I got about 10 of these cantaloupe so far that are hanging inside all of this jungle of cantaloupe vines and they're pretty near softball size now so hopefully we'll have a good harvest of this fruit this year. Now one of the benefits of having lots of rain early in the season is lots of growth but with the growth with the abundance of green is also an abundance of bugs. These are stink bugs. The stink bugs they don't really kill anything but they do pierce tomatoes and other fruit and they cause them to look well just a little blotchy and not as desirable they don't ruin the flavor sometimes if it's really damaged you can hint it's a little bit bitter I have lots more to show you in the garden I got lots of ideas I want to I want to show you and and the videos are a good way to stimulate conversation between all of you and me and it's just a fun way to get the gardening community together. Behind me is some Swiss chard and lettuce, some cats, some peppers, and other things that are not doing real well, but you know, the garden has its ups and downs. I'm also going to put in a little clip of my potato harvest from last night. We'll put that in right now. You know, you are supposed to wait for the ground to dry out before you harvest your potatoes. And uh, you're not going to get much drier than this, so no issues with moisture today. Okay, let's see. One. I won't count all of them. My understanding is that uh, potatoes and tomatoes, they shouldn't be planted in the same soil, you know, season after season. I'm not sure exactly why, something to do with the, the nightshade family doing something in the soil. I really need to look that up so I can educate you, but the truth is, I don't know, so you might have to educate me. I just know that that's what I've heard about potatoes and tomatoes. But the soil otherwise is really nice and loose. It's got compost and coconut coir. And I don't want to throw it out, so I'm going to put it in a garden bed for something else. Some of these plants did real well. Some of them didn't. So this is my harvest from, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six fabric pots. That's not bad. I think there was probably a total of 12 seed potatoes, and this is a harvest from that. Now I got a couple other containers in there. I'm going to pull out here and see what the difference is between the fabric pot, the terracotta pot, and the uh, Rubbermaid tote. The plastic held more moisture. But did it grow more potatoes? Here's the harvest from the, uh, the plastic container. That's a total of six plants. Not a great big harvest. I thought I'd get a little more out of that. But that's okay. Let's see what I get out of the terracotta pot. It seems that the root structure in the terracotta pot is way more dense. Looks like that's it. 
So that is what I get out of a terracotta pot. That was two potato plants. I think overall the, the potatoes in the fabric pots, well, it's kind of hard to say really who performed better because this was probably 12 plants. This was six plants. This was two plants. So I don't know, maybe it's all about the same. But no matter, just gonna put them all together, put them in the kitchen. And that's my harvest. Total harvest from the, uh, the white potatoes in the containers. Thank you so much for joining me here in the Daddy Curbs garden. I'm glad to be back online and I look forward to the conversation with you. I'll talk to you soon.